Good morning and welcome to On The Pulse on Asake Online. My name is Leslie Moyo. The program focuses on service delivery issues affecting the city of Bulawa and the Matebelean region as a whole. In today's edition of the program, we focus on World Water Day, which was commemorated uh, this uh, past uh, Monday under the theme Valuing Water. Various organizations and governments worldwide uh, held uh, uh, several events uh, uh, to commemorate uh, this uh, day and to bring awareness uh, uh, to uh, water issues. Uh, Bulawayo historically has had uh, uh, challenges in terms of access uh, to uh, water, and uh, this time around, uh, we are happy because because uh, uh, we are blessed with uh, good rains and uh, the city's uh, supply dams uh, are currently uh, averaging around 70% in terms of uh, uh, water uh, capacity. But uh, water challenges still persist in the city of Lawa as some residents in some parts are still experiencing uh, water uh, cuts. Uh, so the Lawa Progressive Residents Association held uh, a virtual World Water Day commemorative event uh, this past Monday uh, to highlight some of the issues uh, that are being faced uh, by uh, Lawa residents. Uh, the city council officials uh, during the event did highlight uh, uh, some of the uh, challenges that continue uh, to hinder uh, access uh, to water by a Bulawa resident. Let's get to hear uh, a presentation from uh, a city council engineer on why uh, some residents of Bulawa are still uh, not getting water on a daily basis, even after uh, the city council lifted uh, the water shedding schedule. And as a city, we value these kind of dialogues because it allows us to hear what residents are saying and thinking and what they would like us to do. And also, we are going to use this platform to give you the feedback on what we've been doing as a city and also in terms of where we are in terms of dam levels. Mr. Guetu is here. I don't know if he can just let me know if he's ready so that I can hand over to him. But what is key, maybe coming from, I think it's Dr. Nare, was the issue of how much fresh water we have. It's 3%, which is available to us globally. And of that amount, there still are restrictions as to how much we can have for drinking. So basically, when we look at Bulawayo, geographically, our dams are located um, in a drought-prone region. We are also in a drought-prone region. But our dams are also in the south of the city, which has had adverse impacts when it comes to climate change. We look at where we are probably this rain season, after coming through three years of a drought. So we are in a season where we are coming out of a drought, but what is needed as a city and as a community is to come up with climate change adaptation strategies or resilience strategies of how we can manage our water. So basically as Bulawa in terms of water management, we've been having the water rationing strategy, which was put in place in the 1980s. This is on the consumer side where we are saying as consumers, let's limit the amount of water we use a day within our household. When we have water rationing, it, we are basically saying, um, you as a consumer have the responsibility of uh, limiting the quantities of water that you use, but on every day of the week, water is able to come out of the tap because we are trusting that you will limit your consumption. That is the first stage. So water um, rationing has been in Bulawai from the 1980s, even up to today, we still have those rations as a strategy to improve our, 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 our water conservation or water mitigation measures to ensure that our water is able to stretch to the next rain season. So basically that's what water rationing will do for us. Then water shedding normally comes when we start looking at the dam levels and they start to decrease. We then are forced as a municipality to say, given the amount of water that is now in the dams, it means that with that amount of water, we cannot afford to have water coming out every day to each household. That is why we start to have hours of when we don't have water. I think we've heard this quite a lot and we want to thank the community for being understanding. It's been a difficult year. I think all of us know this is the worst drought that we've gone through as a city. And also, as we look at the city, we look at um, how old the city is, the aged infrastructure. So subsequent to lack of water in the dams, you find that our infrastructure is old. That's why we have these bears 
we have um, challenges with um, water leaks that go on and on. So there's a need for investments into the renewal or rehabilitation of the infrastructure. So all these plans that look at um, provision of water in terms of increasing capacity to pump, increasing or improving the pipelines, these are all outlined in our master plan, the water and wastewater master plan, which then also provides a funding strategy or it looks at how much funding is needed to make sure that our water infrastructure can be up to a good quality. So that program or that strategy was put in place from as way back as 2012. And what we are doing now, as we do these mitigations, we follow according to funding that comes in, we pick out issues from the master plan. And then we try and um, rehabilitate certain pipes, certain pumps, so that we are able to be efficient in our water usage so that we reduce um, non-revenue water. I think Mr. Gwetri is coming on stream. I'm just really holding on for him. But I thought it would be key for me to talk about these issues. And then also water is a right, um, access to water when we look at the community. As a city, we do have free water, which is like 5,000 liters per household. I know residents have said we don't see that water. But what you need to do when you go to your bill, the first zero to five kiloliters, it will say times zero, which is basically saying from that band, there is no charge. So that's how the free water comes in. It is used, it goes through the system, it goes through your home, but you are not charged for it. So that is cut across the city. And also our studies show that this is about um, 25 drums, I think, of water per month that are free per household. So in terms of um, vulnerable communities or vulnerable households, that basically says, if you are able to manage your water, your bill will be limited. I also want to talk about the issue of participation. We always have to see how we improve because um, the table is always prepared for people to come and participate. But sometimes it's the nature or the quality of the participation that we need to work on. As a city and stakeholders, we do have a um, water crisis committee that was formed, I think, years back, which basically is activated to talk about um, water shortage, firstly, and the strategies that need to come in. So from water shortage, we have strategies that have been put in place through various clusters. For instance, we've got resource mobilization, we've got an education one, um, we've got one that looks at um, compliance and also the one that works with uh, policy advocacy. So those clusters um, are inputted by stakeholders that come from business, that come from consumers, that come from residents association and also um, policymakers, whether it's the municipality, but also fitting in to our national policymakers. Because when we look at water supply, we also have to fit into national government, given the fact that raw water is the responsibility of national government. So we've had a few of those meetings, but with COVID-19, we also had to go virtual. So we've tried to maintain communication. We've tried to open the platform for participation. Even when we talk about our budget, when we do go down on the ground, we do give feedback of how much it will cost per household, how much it will cost for water, how much it will cost uh, for certain areas for your rates and for your, for your refuse removal. So all those details are there when we go to the ground. And also we input back to the residents or stakeholders so that they can give us their feedback. I think that was key. And what was also key was what Dr. Nare said when he spoke of um, the issue of research. I think as an institution, we already, as a city, we've signed MOUs with institutions of higher learning, such as uh, National University of Science and Technology. And through various um, departments, we also have interns or students that come from various areas of learning, not only the National University of Science and Technology, we've got um, the other, Lupani State University, United, University of Zimbabwe, as well as other universities, whether nationally or internationally. When they come for their internship, they are, um, those that are in water or civil engineering or health are at liberty to choose their research topics because most of them come back to do their research. So we're also asking some of those issues that Dr. Nare was saying that institutions of higher learning should then pick them up 
and whether through the MOU we do the research that are needed or through their students. So that's an opportunity for us to engage further. So it's an invitation because it's not only limited to maybe the municipality and institutions of higher learning, there are other researchers elsewhere. We've also had people coming, international researchers that have come and said, I'm doing this project on this aspect of water in Bulawayo. And through the relevant resolution from the municipality, we are able to do that research in partnership or having access to council documents. So with those few words, allow me to invite Engineer Gwetu. I think you should be ready now. Confirm. We can hear you, Mr. Guetu. Please go ahead. Thank you. My presentation is brief. Uh, it's uh, mainly centered on uh, the water situation update. Um, what's the situation in our dams? <clears throat> the dams are the city's dams are currently at seventy one at seventy point five one percent. That is as of today, this morning. Now, the average consumption so far into March, the city is consuming about 126 megaliters per day. Uh, what are we inputting into the system? Uh, through our treatment plants, we are inputting on average uh, to date so far about 125 megaliters. Uh, currently, we are in the process of commissioning the new flow cell pumps, which I am quite sure uh, most of us have heard of. Uh, these uh, new flow cell pumps have got a delivery of over 80 megaliters per day, which is directed to Criterion, our major treatment works. Um, may I say uh, the flow cells will, we, will be working in tandem with another set of pumps, which we call the Salsa pumps, uh, which also have got a delivery of over 80 megaliters a day, also to Criterion. Currently, we have got over 90% of the city now receiving water more constantly ever since the 15th when we, we, we took off water shedding. Um, there we are in terms of our uh, dam volumes, dam by dam. In Caesar Mayfair, our biggest dam, which is operational and has got that capacity of over 173 million cubic meters at full supply, is currently at 83%, which is 83.64. <clears throat> right? Out of uh, the 83.64, the actual volume is about 145 million cubic meters with a use of volume of about 138 million. The next term, which is our second largest, is Inyankun with a capacity of over 80 million cubic meters. It's at 65 percent. Lower Nema, it's at 42 percent. It's 42.18. Umzingwane. It's at 35.5 percent. Upper Nema is at 76.59 percent. In Chavez, it's at 68.85 percent. Globally, these dams are at 70.51 percent, as I have stated in my former slide. So that's where we are uh, in terms of. Um, the terms scenarios, 
Right, I've mentioned this one, the system input volume vis-a-vis -vis, uh, our consumption as a city. Our consumption has gone up ever since we opened up shedding. Uh, we used to average about 90 megaliters per day, but currently, as you can see, uh, as I stated, we are now at 126, so fine too much. Now, what you see there, you see the consumption in blue line now coming up and in some instances going over the system input volume, what we are putting into the system every day. Um, as we work, as we finish the commissioning of the new flow cell pumps, the scenario will change. We will see a situation where our system input volume becomes greater than what we are consuming. Right, to move on to the next slide, as we go about the, 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 the mandate of, of, of giving water to the consumers and our residents, we do meet a series of challenges, which we, we, we try by all means to overcome. Number one, quite sure, Many times you have seen notices circulating on, on social media and also on the press advising uh, the city and the consumers of power interruptions, power supply interruptions. These power supply interruptions to treatment plants, to pub stations, to abstraction points uh, have got a negative effect in terms of, of, of us continuously supplying uh, the consumers with water. Besides power supply interruptions, we also have got our best, which occur on main bulk, bulk mains. Then we have got uh, aging infrastructure. And in addition, we have got uh, reduced or lack of payments from some quarters of the consumers. So as is necessary for the city, to recover and recoup expenses on water expenditures. These are some of the challenges which we meet. Right, looking forward, uh, we look forward as a city to continue improving our water supply so that we attain 100% uninterrupt, uninterrupted supply to consumers. In, Except in instances where we may have uh, brief challenges such as localized pests, but even those localized pests, we have got a time frame of attending to them. So, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you. Don't forget, you can also participate uh, in this program uh, by sending us uh, uh, any service delivery challenges that you're facing in your locality. It can be a sewer burst pipe, uh, or a broken street uh, light, uh, or a portal uh, in your road. So all you can do is uh, capture those details and send them uh, to this uh, WhatsApp uh, number uh, below your screen. Uh, then uh, we'll take up uh, these uh, issues with uh, the local authority to ensure uh, that that uh, service delivery is uh, um, provided uh, by uh, those in charge. Uh, my name is uh, Leslie Moy. Let's meet again in the next edition of uh, Fix My City. In this particular uh, edition, uh, we are focusing on uh, World Water Day, uh, which was commemorated uh, worldwide uh, this uh, past Monday. And uh, for Bulawayo residents, it seems like uh, uh, while we are celebrating uh, no, uh, the good rains that we received uh, and our dams are receiving, significant inflows. Seems like uh, uh, the water challenges are still uh, with us as some residents are still not uh, accessing uh, water uh, on their taps. So uh, we continue to uh, urge the local authority to attend uh, to these challenges. They, they raised a number of issues. One of them is uh, the aging uh, infrastructure and so which is failing uh, really uh, to uh, service uh, the city of uh, Bulara. Let's meet again in the next edition of uh, Fix My City. It's a goodbye for me for now.